welcome to another recap of The Real Housewives of Potomac. Season five, episode six, the text heard round the lake. Ooh. Yeah, I, I discussed how um, on the uh, on the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills when Denise said that the uh, the text string that Brandy had could have been faked. Um, I'm not sure if she did or didn't have something with Brandy, but the fact was so many recappers had no idea that you can easily fake realistic text strings. And I heard recappers say, recappers that I love, because um, I watch all of them, like, there's so many good ones. And I heard them say, oh, come on, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. You want us to believe that you can fake texts? So on that um, episode, I actually made for you a fake text string. I pretended that Denise texted me and said, you know, like, hey girl or whatever, and then told me that my husband was hot. Because he certainly used to be in love with her <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> she was definitely one of his favorites. I mean, she, she's still beautiful. Um, he's just not as aware of her now since he's not really a big Bravo fan. Although, I think I've lured him over to the dark side since I've started doing this because I definitely noticed that he is more aware of what's going on. So uh, that's what being married is about. You lift each other up, bring each other down, sometimes in a good way. Both up can be good, down can be good. It depends. Um, okay, so, um, all right. So I faked this text string using an app, a free app, and there are like 10 of them. If you go to the app store on, or, your, or whatever it is for Android, and you, you put in a search for fake text app, it'll give you a bunch of them and they have ads on them so they're free and i'm not recommending you do this i don't want people to get in trouble and you know but this is why texts are not reliable evidence anymore for the same reason photos and even film is no longer well nobody uses film but you know video is no longer um is no longer uh, really necessarily reliable evidence because of the level of technology. So if I can send a very convincing looking text that says from Denise Richards, it has her little picture in the thumbnail and it has the date and the time and everything. Actually, the one I put on, on air didn't have her thumbnail, but the one I ma made and actually forwarded to my husband <laughs> had her thumbnail. <laughs> I don't think he fell for it, but anyway. Um, so yeah, so that it's absolutely ridiculous. Okay, however, in this case, in this case, um, yeah, I think I, I'm, I'm pretty sure these are these are the real deal. Um, and uh, also, you have you know a photo of him in a club, which could have been taken in some other situation, but um, yeah, it, it it just it goes it goes with and ties in very well with what we have heard about Michael. And although everything, every accusation against him has either been settled or something has been done to kind of put it away, the fact is, I've said it before, where there's this much smoke, I want to say, yeah, there's a fire. Um, and I really try very hard to do the innocent until proven guilty. But Michael, I feel in my bones that that guy is, is a freak. He's freaky. I'm not saying, God, I'm not saying because he is bisexual. No, no, no. I, I, I mean, it's way beyond that. <laughs> I mean, he likes to control people. He likes to play games with people. He probably is into some freaky stuff in terms of sex too. But I'm just saying that's a vibe I get from him. And um, again, you know, a, if you're bi, that's great. Um, which I think he probably is. I think he's bi. Um, but you know what? Then maybe let your wife know. Or maybe, I mean, do they have some kind of arrangement? I don't think so. I don't think so. I just, yeah. I, you know, we can never see inside the bedrooms and inside the homes of these people that we watch on television. So there's so much we don't know. But I'm just going to reiterate that I just have feel like Michael is creepy and possibly a freak. And being a freak can be an awesome thing, but I think a freak in a, in a sort of 
I shouldn't say freak, but um, let's say he's creepy, but also I think he's a deceiver. I think he's, uh, I think he, he covers up or tries to cover up who he really is. And I would totally respect him if he just came out and said, you know what, I don't wanna be married, I wanna do everything, I wanna be with all different kinds of people, and that's fine. But you know, a lot of people wanna have that anchor. They wanna have that little wifey in the home and the baby and then still go do whatever. So, and again, it's not for us to judge the marriage if that's something that's part of the marriage, but I, I don't know, I don't think so. So anyway, um, I'm not optimistic. I think Ashley's about to get really hurt. Um, well, I mean, she already has been now at this point, uh, on top of how badly she's already been hurt. And I'm not saying she's perfect. You know, she can be a right bitch too. She can play games, but um, yeah, I don't want to see uh, Ash at this point with her little baby, with little baby Dean and everything else have to deal with more Michael crap. And if it is what it appears, if these texts are accurate, why is this guy such an idiot? Why does he do these things always when there's cameras around, when the crew's around, like at Monique and Chris's house, or, you know, go out into a club in private? Michael Darby, you're a very unique looking man. And I use the word unique because I'm trying to be polite, but you're a very unique looking man. So if you go out anywhere in the DC area, the greater Baltimore DC corridor, you're gonna be recognized. So I don't know what the hell he's doing. I don't know what the hell he's thinking. And again, we also don't entirely know the truth. Anyway, okay. So we, we jump in to something less interesting, but spicy. Um, Ashley and Wendy are continuing their fight. We're, we're at the dinner table from the episode before. They're continuing their fight. And uh, Wendy is going right, she goes right to ugly. She goes right from, yes, I am. Dr. Wendy Acefo to scary, scary bitch and uh, gets very aggressive and um, uh, also does something which I, I've said before, I cannot stand. If you're an academic, nobody wants to hear how many degrees you have. You don't get a degree so that you can scream at people, I have four degrees, I have a PhD. Um, let me tell you how many times since I got my doctorate many, many years ago, let me tell you how many times I've screamed at someone, I have a PhD. I don't know, possibly once in an ugly fight with my husband. <laughs> Not that we have that many ugly fights, but maybe, I, I don't know. The only thing I can think of is if, is, is if he said something like, you know, oh, no, you're just being stupid that I would, if I was in the middle of a fight, maybe say, I have a PhD. But yeah, at a dinner table to friends, no. And I'm not, abs I'm not absolutely sure I have ever said, I have a PhD like that in a rage. You do it for yourself. It's an achievement that no one can take away from you that's very difficult. It's really arduous. It means something. Very few people in this country have them. Sometimes it seems like everybody's a PhD, but a real legitimate PhD, <laughs> not that many of them so you know i really take exception to her using that in a social situation to leverage herself in a fight with another woman that you don't even know that well <gasps> badly played dr wendy osefo very badly played no 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 slow claps for you no okay um it's kind of funny because they're, uh, Monique's confessionals are cute. She, uh, and her look is cute. You know, I like the Afro puffs. I love the, I just like to say Afro puffs. <laughs> Wish I could rock them at my big age and I can't. Um, <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe when I was 18 or 16, maybe, I don't know. Um, but it's cute because in her confessional, Monique says, we already have a Candace when she sees Wendy acting up. We already have a Candace. We don't need another Candace. They already have one rageaholic and now she's afraid they have another rageaholic. So yeah, so Wendy's whack. Dr. Wendy Osefos is whack or can be. 
Okay, and Monique is like, God, I'm kind of wishing I stayed home, but that's, you know, kind of in the moment because the dinner does not go well. Um, Ashley apologizes to Wendy just to kind of put it to bed. And I'm trying to remember, because it was the last, um, it was the last episode. I'm like, wait, why are you apologizing? I know there was something about you jumped on her because she jumped on you for bringing the baby when she couldn't bring the baby. Um, but I, I sort of don't remember there being a real strong foundation to this argument. And I don't remember, I know that Ashley, when, when Wendy starts getting nasty, Ashley will immediately turn it up and get nasty. That's Miss Ashley. Ashley isn't usually the first one who will start just screaming at somebody or going in on somebody. But one thing I notice about Ashley is when there is shouting going on, oh, she'll jump right in there and you'll have to pull her out physically. I mean, I'm joking. I mean, I'm talking, you know, like in terms of conversationally, you will have to really put out a fire to get her to calm down and stop shouting. I don't know, sometimes maybe even physically. She's feisty, she seems so sweet. She's got that little face like a little doll. She's so cute. She is, yeah, she's she's a tough chick. She She's not, she doesn't back down easily from a fight. So again, when she apologizes to Wendy, it, it does calm everything down. It does chill everything out, okay? Which is good, you know, for Monique's dinner, poor Monique. Um, but again, I can't remember exactly why she apologized. Anyway, it works. Doesn't matter. It works. Okay. And we have more stuff coming down the pipe, so we don't need this. We don't need this to continue. Okay. Um, and it's funny because uh, actually I, I wrote in my notes, you know, maybe she is emotional because Cameron is um, only a couple months old and um, maybe she has a little postpartum or, you know, and then I'm also wondering because she talks a lot about how Cameron was, was a preemie. She was two months premature. I mean, that's a preemie. Uh, my stepson was two months premature. So in other words, she went through the whole thing of being in the, in the NICU and the neonatal intensive care unit. I had to think for a second what NICU stands for. Yeah, neonatal intensive care unit. So she had to go through all that. And you know, it's very touch and go with little babies. You have to be very careful. Do you um, put them on a ventilator or not? Because that affects how their lungs develop later in life. And oh, it, I mean, it's gotta be a nightmare. Again, hearing Lowell talk about going through it with Daniel, with my stepson, my little baby, who's now 22. He's not a baby anymore, <laughs> but he'll always be five years old to me. Um, but just seeing the pictures of him when he was first born, oh my God, he was like, he fit. He fit in, in, actually my husband has huge hands. Um, and he, well he's six foot four, so it would be weird if he had little tiny hands. I'm not gonna say that would make him like someone very much in the public eye who is quite tall but has tiny little hands, but I'm not gonna say any names. So when he was first born, he literally could put him in his hand. He was tiny. So anyway, um, so yeah, I was thinking, you know what, this, this is probably, she's wondering why the, hell, why the hell did I leave Cameron at home? And it doesn't matter that this is her third child and she has the two boys. She didn't go through, um, she didn't go through the whole preemie baby thing before. And the other thing is, it doesn't matter. I mean, you could have baby blues and, and you could have, you know, you could have um, postnatal depression and you could miss your tiny baby at any time. I would think that even, you know, if you if it was your sixth kid and they were two months old, I'm not sure if you're like, woohoo, going to Vegas. You know, I I, I don't think so. Anyway, um, let me know in the comments. <laughs> I would think that when any child is really little like that, I know part of you is probably like, God, I've been pregnant and then I've been here in the house with the baby and maybe there's a time where you're like, I need to get out of here, but I don't know what that time is. And I'm sure it's probably different for every person. Okay, so what, what I was thinking was, okay, let's not judge her on this one situation because it was triggered by Dean showing up. It was triggered by Ashley bringing the baby. And maybe it is just a, you know, a Cameron thing. Let's see if she blows up this easily again in a future episode. My guess is she will. My guess is she's got this side, she's got a temper, she will blow up again at some point. There will be more ugly words from Dr. Wendy Osefo. But I think that the ex explanation for this particular incident is the baby thing. I do. And Cameron's really cute. Every time they show a picture of that baby, I just want to go, she's so cute. Oh. 
Um, okay, and then we immediately go to uh, the next morning. Ashley is with Dean. I, all little babies are, are adorable, but you know, Dean just looks exactly like Michael from Cameron to Dean. Yeah, but just right now, Dean is just a little baby, a little miniature Michael all the way. It's like I'm looking at his face and it's just like, wow. Um, <clears throat> okay. The ladies decide to have a pancake off. Yeah, little tip here. Um, this weekend is, uh, is in general pretty boring. The way to characterize this ladies weekend is boring because it's a pretty boring location even though the house is beautiful. Uh, interspersed with moments of great drama. So um, this is the boring day. All right, so they have a pancake off because Giselle and Monique are like fighting words about who makes the best pancakes. And they make it into a big contest, again, because they're bored. <laughs> they have to make content for the show and they have to amuse themselves. Um, it's kind of cute. It's kind of cute the way, um, yeah, uh, Giselle and Monique are really getting along. They're they're kind of good together as friends. We'll, we'll see if that if that lasts. But yeah, they're definitely they're friends now. Okay, um, Candace and Monique, however, are just simply not talking. They're just kind of avoiding a lot of close personal contact, and there are enough ladies there that that's very much possible. Okay, Ashley calls Michael and can't get him. He says he was out celebrating closing a big deal and that after dinner he went out for drinks with some of the guys. Dun, dun, dun. Because of course, I forgot to mention, <laughs> at the very beginning of the show they, they give us a little clue that Candace is going to receive this text. I just mentioned texts in the beginning of the, of the recap. But we see a preview of what's coming later in the episode which is Candace receiving texts from a friend who was out in a strip club, who saw Michael there, who said that he was um, bragging to people that he had a wife and a boyfriend, and that he was trying to get several of the girls, asking different girls to go back to his hotel room with him. So, da, da, da. anyway, we all know what's coming. Okay, um, well, they do they do show us um, actually this is the point where they show us um, it says 12 hours later and you know something dramatic is coming Bravo's loving this season using a timeline yesterday day before yesterday today 2 p.m. tomorrow you know they're, they're being very specific about the timeline and trying to make it more dramatic they're doing a lot of weird things this season that they never did before like having the cameraman on camera all the time having producers on camera all the time constantly breaking the fourth wall very odd season and it's it's an odd season all the way across the board in all the franchises so not sure what's going on but uh, anyway okay um, so this is where we actually see the text that says your your girl's baby daddy was in the club hitting on people bragging that he had a wife and a boyfriend and then there was a picture of michael in you know the lighting looked like either a, a nightclub or uh, you know um a club or um a strip club so yeah Ah, all right, so the pancake off. Well, we don't really need to do a recap of that because that's when we know that the show's really <laughs> not a rich episode. It's not a rich episode full of eventful <laughs> goings on. Um, but let's just say that um, uh, Monique wins the pancake off. Woo! Woo! Okay, um, the ladies are going fishing. Um, this is actually Monique's birthday weekend. Did we know this? Maybe we did know this, but I had forgotten. That makes sense. That's why all the guys are coming the last night also, because it's her birthday weekend. So um, she wanted Chris to, I guess Chris cooks or he barbecues or both, but she wanted him to do the dinner for that last night when the guys and the women are all going to be there together. And he said, oh, I just can't. I can't get it together. I can't decide what I want to do. Let's just, just hire someone to do it. Just have it catered. 
And Monique feels disappointed. Um, you know, he's he's this big guy in, in you know, the sports world, and he's got this busy life. Um, but I know she has to swallow a lot of stuff. She has a great life. She has an amazing life because of him. You know, she has a beautiful family. I'm sure he loves her. But I'm also sure that somebody like that who's very in demand, you might not always feel like the most important thing, you know, at the center of their universe all the time. And Chris seems like a very chill guy who's not very emotional or demonstrative to begin with. So Monique says something that I think is so good. I love, see, I think these women are just, they're clever. These women are smarter than the other franchises. So basically we're starting with women who are basically more, <laughs> just more intelligent, just, or whatever you wanna say. But um, I like the way they put things. So Monique said that, you know, she, um, she will put things away in little boxes. You know, like if she's having a disagreement with a friend and she doesn't really want to carry it on, she'll just drop it, she'll let it go to keep the peace, she'll put it away in a box and she'll put the box up in the shelf. And then she said every time that Chris kind of disappoints her, you know, she'll wrap it away in a little box and she'll put the box up on the shelf. And then she says, but at one point, the boxes are gonna fall off the shelf and there's gonna be a mess I'm gonna to have to clean up. And she's very self-aware because that's very true. That's exactly what happens if you do that. If you try and stuff everything into little boxes and maintain everything, you know, as being perfectly calm, perfectly even. I'm great. I can handle anything. Yeah, that, that is what happens. There is a mess to clean up. Okay. Um, Giselle and Wendy are taking a little stroll, a brief stroll. And... Um, Wendy says that seeing Ashley's baby definitely triggered her, so I was right. I mean, I, I felt that, that it, was, it had to do with her baby not being there and Dean being there. She said it absolutely triggered her. And Giselle said, okay, that's fine, but you know, your anger shouldn't have really been directed at Ashley. She's got no beef with you. You're, you're messy Giselle. Messy is Giselle's middle name. Um, she says, your anger really should be directed at Karen. And then Giselle goes on to tell her more negative things that Karen has said about her. Um, you know, spilling the tea and stirring the shit. That's kind of Giselle's job. She's very entertaining. We do love her, but that's what she does. Okay, um, now they're off fishing. I don't see this group as being a fishing kind of group, but... Uh, you know, Monique is like very proud of the lake house and the outdoors and the other ladies are just not so into it. They would rather be, you know, they would rather be on a Caribbean island or in Manhattan <laughs> shopping, going out to clubs. I don't think this is their idea of a great time. In fact, I know it's not because they keep commenting on how there's no cell reception and they're kind of bored. Okay. All right. They're actually going out on kayaks. And when I first see the kayaks, I think they're those regular sea kayaks that are like blown, some kind of blown plastic, you know, with the Eskimo style paddles. And those are work. And I'm thinking to myself, these ladies are never gonna be able to manage those. They're gonna be like, it's, it's a lot of work, especially if the wind's blowing the wrong way to get around in those, uh, in those sea kayaks. I've used them a lot. Um, and yeah, it's like it's fun for a little bit and then you're kind of like, oh, this is work. And then you realize, oh God, I have to turn around and go all the way back to the dock or back to the boat. <laughs> it's further than you want it to be. But these actually have little, um, little foot pedals. So the foot pedals actually, you know, propel the boat. So all you have to really do with the Eskimo paddles is, is steer, is maneuver. So um, Karen... Wendy, Ashley, and Giselle decide they're staying on the dock. They're like, yeah, no, no, we're not kayak people. So they stay on the dock and pretend to fish, but they throw like one or two casts and it's like, nope, that's enough, we're good. <laughs> so they, uh, they take the time instead to, what, talk, throw shade, that kind of thing. Okay, uh, this is nice. Wendy apologizes for saying bitch to Ashley and the rest of it. It's an awkward apology. Um, Ashley apologizes that she kept up the bad behavior, which is true. Ashley kept 
throwing fuel to the fire. She was, you know, clapping back really hard. So yeah, the fl the fights the fight is not going to stop if uh, if you lose your temper with someone and the other person blows right back at you. It's just going to go back and forth. And those two were both uh, not happy. They were both really angry. Um, so they both kind of made their apologies. Wendy's was a little weak, but I think for her it was about as strong of an apology as she can make. I don't think she's great at apologizing. And again, Wendy admits she's having a really hard time being away from Cameron. She, uh, she starts talking again about how, you know, when she, she was um, preemie and it's hard being away and she gets emotional. And um, so I think that this thing between um, Ashley and Wendy is not going to develop into any kind of beef. I think it was just sort of in the moment. And I think that, uh, yeah, Wendy explained herself pretty well. Okay. Karen says that she's very confused by Wendy, um, you know, because she sees the academic side, then she sees, you know, the woman who screaming and cursing at the dinner table. Well, have you met any of the other ladies? They're all like that. <laughs> Including you, Karen. You have two sides too. You all do. Um, she says she's just gonna sit back and observe what happens. Who is this Karen? I feel like someone has replaced Karen with, with someone else because um, yeah, Karen was always the one that started stuff. She was messy. And this season she's being very refined. Maybe she's so relieved to be back in Potomac, whether it's a rental or not, that she's just going to be very, very refined. I don't know. I hope we get some mess out of her. I like messy Karen. Okay. Um, oh God. The, <laughs> these ladies spend the whole time at the lake house searching for bars. You know, the, the quest for bars on your cell phone looking for reception, which they're not really going to find. I, there's Wi-Fi at the main house, so I think if, you have, if they have WhatsApp, they're able to call people on WhatsApp from the main house because of Wi-Fi or Skype. But other than that, it's, uh, it's, it's not great. So um, yeah, uh, there is a little confessional with Ashley that is so shady. Talk about being shady. A producer asks Ashley if Michael likes being second in her life now that there's a baby. He doesn't say that. He, does, he just says, how does he like being second in your life? Talk about stirring crap for no reason at all. I mean, why would you ask this question of any mother? Or are you next going to ask, oh, if if there was a sinking boat and you could only save one of them, who would you save, your husband or your baby? I mean, this is kind of sick. And um, what makes it even sadder is that Ashley is not acting in this confessional. This is very honest. Her face, which is usually Ashley face, Ashley. Even when she's screaming obscenities at somebody, she still manages to look cute because she's Ashley. <laughs> But you see her face literally fall. You know that expression her, in, a, in a novel, they'll say, you know, her face fell. And you literally see her go. And so in answer to the question, how does Michael like being second in your life now? She says, he hates it. And that is a very honest slice into what's going on with Ashley. That's not acting. That's not acting. Okay, um, so she gets Michael on whether on Skype or WhatsApp, whatever, and so they have a you know face-to-face -face call, and she says, um, "How was your night out? How was your night out? You know, your big dinner and closing your deal and everything." And um, he says it was great. It was great. It was a night out with the guys, and then you know I'm a little worse for the wear because after dinner we went out and had some drinks. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, now we have a little period of time between, I guess, fishing and dinner, where some pizzas arrive. They have this, you know, pizza restaurant takeout lunch, and then they're just 
bored. Robin looks bored. Even T'Challa, the bird, looks bored. They're all just kind of... Mm. So Giselle says, or the producers told them to say, let's have a pageant off. Let's have a pageant off between the two beauty queens, Candace and Ashley. Ashley was, Ashley was Miss DC. Um, which is actually a very competitive pageant. The very beautiful girls usually win <laughs> Miss DC. Um, and Candace was Miss United States, which I meant to look up before actually filming this recap because it's not Miss USA and it's not Miss America and it's not America's Junior Miss and it's not Miss Teen USA. I have never heard of Miss United States. Is it one of those circuit pageants that's kind of out there to make money that's linked in with those like child beauty pageants i don't know i don't know i've never heard of it um but anyway like i said it's not miss usa which i thought it was i actually thought she was miss usa and i was like wow i was kind of surprised as i thought well she's not quite i mean she's no she's very pretty but i didn't think she was quite miss usa also she's very very petite and Miss USA tends not to be the shortest one in the pack. Um, but she's beautiful. I'm not throwing any shade on Candace's look. She's very, very pretty. But she was, oh, anyway, so she was Miss United States for whatever that is worth. It might be very difficult and it might be an incredible honor or it might be something a little, you know, hmm. Anyway, um, okay. So we have Miss Lady of the Lake, the pageant, and they have their walks, they have their sassy walks. They don't really do pageant walks, they do kind of like sexy walks, more like sexy over the top runway walks, a lot of booty shaking. And um, then they have the question, and Giselle, who is on the tall side, asks Candace, who is tiny, um, how does it feel to be so short? <laughs> And Candace gives a great answer about how it allows her to reach higher, always be reaching higher. And it's a good, it's a really good, very pageanty answer. It's a perfect answer. Then she turns to Ashley and asks something very close to my heart. She says, Ashley, how does it feel to have such a huge forehead? And I'm like, oh, she's a member of the five head tribe, like me. Not a forehead, it's a five head. And yeah, she does have a big forehead. And she answers, well, you know, in a lot of cultures, a large forehead is considered a sign of both beauty and intelligence. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> that's right, that's right. So I'm gonna own my giant forehead. That's actually why I'm wearing my hair in a bun tonight. All because of the forehead comment. Here it is take it or leave it in all its splendor. I'm sorry I didn't get an advertiser. I didn't get an advertiser yet. I'll eventually I'll have something on my I'll be sponsored by, you know, NordVPN or something across. Okay. Um anyway, they have their talents. Ashley twerks very well for a woman who just had a baby. She twerks very well. Um Candace sings happy birthday. Candace does have a beautiful voice. She has a kind of like a gospel type voice and she, yeah, she sings very well. Um, we've heard her sing happy birthday a few times. We have a little montage of her singing happy birthday. So Ashley feels like her talent was not very unique, but they're actually having a really good time together. Ashley and uh, Candace are being, Ashley and Candace are being really, really, cute um, they're they're kind of like you know standing together like oh I, I really I just you, you're so beautiful and I just I really I really hope you get it or you know just those kind of fake pageant things that the girls say to each other they're being very funny they're being very funny and very you know they it's nice to see them getting along after all the stuff that's happened okay um, and the winner is Candace I'm disappointed on behalf of all the members of the five head tribe but Candace wins so, um, and she's very, it's cute. They made a crown out of like a bucket with some artificial flowers. It's pretty cute. Um, okay, now after this, Candace gets the texts, the texts about Michael and the photo of Michael. 
Once again, we see the crew and the cameraman. What is going on with this? Um, they're not even trying to make us feel like we're flies on the wall anymore watching something that could really be happening. They're really just throwing it in our face all the time. This is a TV show. This is a TV show. We know it's a TV show, but we also like to kind of pretend we're sort of like observing and hanging out with, in a sense, these ladies, which is kind of the charm of the show. And if you're constantly seeing producers, people with headphones and clipboards and cameramen, it ruins it. Oh, or producers talking, asking questions all the time. No, I don't like this. I want this to stop. It's gone overboard. It's been in Beverly Hills. It's been in New York. It's been in Potomac. Um, you know, let's see, OC is coming up. They'll probably do it again there. Anyway, um, okay. All right. Um, the first thing that she thinks to do is go right to Giselle. Messy. Giselle, she of the biggest mouth in the greater DC Baltimore corridor. <laughs> of all the people to go to, look, honey, she's already at her maximum trying to keep a secret that Juan is going to propose to Robin. She can't handle anymore. Don't tell her. <sighs> but Giselle listens and she's like, oh my God. Okay, well, um, you know, she's like, what, am, what should I do? What should I do? And um, the answer is obvious. Let Bravo film everything, because this is TV gold. It's TV gold. <sighs> All right, Candace and Ashley just became friendly. So she's like, the last thing in the world I want to do is bring this to her. Um, but Giselle said, yeah, well, you got to tell her. You got to tell her. Maybe tonight at dinner in front of everybody. And then there can be a huge scene in the restaurant in front of a crowd because they're going out to dinner that night. Ah, bravo, 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 bravo. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I seriously hope that, I mean, why wouldn't you tell her privately? Because it's not TV gold. Honestly, I would be so angry if someone brought up something like that in front of other people. She better not do that. She better make it private. She better show her the text and the photo and tell her in private. Oof. Okay. Um, now they're going out. They're going out to a crab restaurant. When I lived in Maryland, or as I often thought of it, when I was held prisoner in Maryland for four years, <laughs> because I lived in Annapolis and we had a boat and we had a beautiful house and everything was beautiful and clean and lovely and there was lovely nature all around and I was so bored and the people were just so hard to break in with and I was a California slash Florida Miami girl and they thought I dressed too sexy, I wore too much makeup, I didn't wear too much makeup, I wore makeup in Annapolis, being a hoochie mama is wearing mascara and not wearing a, a, a turtleneck with little ducks all over it and corduroy pants. That is being a hoochie mama in Annapolis. So by that standard, yeah, I was a hoochie mama. I was like 29 years old, you know? Like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna wear like tent dresses, Laura Ashley looking tent dresses with little flowers on them and turtlenecks and baggy pants. Hell no. I'm young and I'm cute and I'm skinny and I'm stuck in Maryland for four years, but I'm still going to dress the way I want to dress. So I did. Um, and the one thing that I hated, which I didn't have to do very often unless there were people coming from out of town, I did not like going to the crab restaurants. Um, I am not a bit, I, I've eaten all types of shellfish. I've eaten everything. I'm, I'm have a pretty no, I'm, I'm basically vegetarian. I eat some. I eat, I'm pescatarian. I eat, like I've told you before, um, but I don't eat shellfish. I've never been a huge fan of shellfish. Although you know, yeah, I've had some in the past when I ate it. I've had some lovely lobster. But those little crabs that they have in the Chesapeake Bay and in the rivers around the Chesapeake, not interested. Too much work, and you go into those restaurants, and the whole place it's got brown paper 
on the tables and you got the mallets, the, the, the wooden mallets and you, you know, you, you, you crack the crabs. And there's a little thing that looks like uh, the opener of a beer can that you flip the crab over and you open that tab on the stomach and that helps you to open up. Uh, I mean, there's like a whole thing you have to go through. It was just like so much work and I felt like kind of just gross. And then that smell of Old Bay, I actually came to hate Old Bay. And I remember when I first moved up there, I was like, what is that taste when it would be in soup, like crab soup? I do like crab bisque or I don't eat it anymore, but I used to like crab bisque. And so I was like, oh, what is that? It's so interesting, that combination of herbs and spices. And then I came to hate it from going to those crab restaurants and it gets all over your fingers and they put too much of it in the pot with the crab. So it just, everything just reeks of Old Bay and the restaurant reeks of Old Bay and crab bits. And yeah, I just, uh. so when I saw them walking in to this restaurant, Oh, first I should tell you on the way to the restaurant, Robin said, does anyone else feel like they've been kidnapped? <laughs> and that's how I felt. That's how I felt when I lived in Maryland. I'm like, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm being held here against my will. I was getting my PhD at the University of Maryland. I was going to a wonderful doctoral program at a beautiful school, University of Maryland College Park, a fabulous school. I loved that. I loved the studying. Um, oh my God, I loved DC. I spent as much time in DC as, as possible and Georgetown, Alexandria, you know, all, I loved that. But anything kind of outside of the immediate metropolitan um, DC area, I, 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 it just wasn't me. It just wasn't me, <laughs> I don't know, but I was definitely, you know, thinking in the back of my mind, uh, when can we go back to Miami? Because we were going to come back to Miami. We knew we were going to come back down after, you know, a few years. My my ex-husband was going to work for this company as a, he had this kind of special like project he was working on and it was a great opportunity for him. Um, and it really boosted his career a lot. After that, he opened his own company. So that was a four, four years that were really important to both of us. And P.S., during those four years, we traveled and I lived in France. So I don't know why I was even complaining because the second two of the four years that I was there, I was spending like a few months in Maryland and then a few months in France in the archives studying and doing research for my PhD dissertation. So what, what was so hard about that? But I just remember, especially in the first two years, I was like, oh, I mean, really the PhD program saved me because that was so much fun and so interesting. I had a great advisor, um, that was amazing. So it was, a, it was a great experience, but there were just times when I was like, we'd be in like these little towns. We had a boat, so we'd go to these really funky little towns on the Eastern shore, which are beautiful, scenically they're beautiful. But it's like the same families have lived there since the 1600s and they kind of look like it. So it just, it wasn't, it wasn't my bag, baby. That's all I can say. But now if I had a chance to go back up there on holiday, like I'd love to show my, my husband, I'd love, this husband, I would love to show him some of these beautiful little towns. And now I would love to go up there on holiday. It would be really fun. It would actually be really fun now. But I didn't like being stuck there. <laughs> okay, that was a long detour. All right. So, but the thing is, all of this is to tell you why. When they walk into the restaurant and they're all kind of wearing heels, they think they're dressed casually because some of them are wearing jeans, but like Robin's wearing really high heel stiletto heels and jeans and then kind of like a dressy shirt. And so they're kind of, a, for them, they're dressed casually, but it's very casual dressy. And for rural Maryland, for a lake in, in Western Maryland, they're dressed like they're going to the Oscars and everyone's staring at them. And I think that the state motto of Maryland should be, welcome to Maryland, don't mind our staring at you. Because if you look the slightest bit different, if you didn't fit in with the crowd and didn't dress like everybody else and didn't have the same beliefs or didn't go to the right church or whatever, I bet just I've never been to a place in the United States where people just stare so much. So yeah, um, I, I personally felt very connected to this episode, even though it was kind of boring. But again, it was boring with moments of great. All right. Um, 
but I'm loving when they walk in. They're like, everyone's staring at us. And I'm like, oh, that was my life for four years. Everyone's staring at me everywhere I went. But I was the type who would, after a while, I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm just going to F with people. And I would go to the supermarket in like a short dress and, you know, just and wedgies, just a short dress and wedge heels, just, just to bother people. I had like hair down to my waist. You know, I, I, yeah, I, I think I must have looked like some, yeah. Uh, no, not like a hooker. That's not what I was, what I was gonna say, but I, I, I think I was very colorful. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> but I refuse to stop dressing up. I, the only time I will stop dressing up is when I'm volunteering in Haiti or in Africa or in village Africa or village India, obviously. Other than that, though, and when I'm in my own country, when I'm in the United States, I'm wearing what I want to wear. I don't care if I'm in North Dakota or some more Colorado city is at the Mormon compound city. I don't care. I'm dressing like me. I don't think there's any reason why I would ever go to Colorado City. That's where Warren Jeffs and the fundamentalist Church of Jesus Christ and Latter-day Saints is. I don't think I'll be going there. Sorry, I'm very tangential tonight. Okay. Um, yes, I wrote that to this day, I despise the smell of Old Bay. I will literally smell it and I will leave the room. So... <laughs> That's my post-traumatic stress syndrome from, um, from Maryland. Okay, I love it. They're at Billy's Crab Shack and they've got Veuve Clicquot. They brought their own wine and their own Veuve Clicquot. Um, okay, uh, Robin says that she feels, Monique is talking a little bit about the situation with Chris. And Robin says that she feels Monique's pain about Chris not really doing anything to help her at all because when she was married to Juan and he was at the top of his career and in, in the uh, you know in the NBA and he was gone all the time and he was busy 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 and busy in some other ways too um, sh she felt like she was not necessarily the priority so she said you know I, I feel her pain um, you know Chris um, is still up at the top Juan was knocked down a few levels and you know, that, that that brought about some changes. Let's hope that those are permanent changes in Juan. Okay, um, Giselle asks if, uh, she, she asks Karen, is Ray missing you? And Karen says, um, you know, basically she, she's, she's like, well, I asked him if he missed me and he said, or, or I asked him, basically all I could get out of him was that he had a good day golfing or something like that. And so, what I feel is that for Karen, she's being really open. She is letting out the fact that things are not great with Ray, that there's a distance between them. She's made several references to this now. Um, Wendy says, yeah, I just don't know about Karen. I feel like she just hides things. I feel like she's always hiding stuff, like she's not really opening up about how her life really is. What Wendy does not realize is that for Karen, this is opening up. She's opening up now. In the past, if anyone asked her about Ray, she'd say, oh, my love of my life. I'm his queen. I'm his goddess. I'm his African queen. You know Ray. You know how he adores me. Everything's fabulous in our marriage. That's all she would have said, regardless of what was going on. So this is a change. I think that all of this kind of, you know, the trouble that he went through um, and the moving out of their, you know, their long time house that they owned and renting and things like that has also knocked them down a few pegs and I think in Karen's case it's made her a little softer. In my honest opinion or in my humble opinion. Okay, uh, they ask how Michael's doing to Ashley and Ashley says um, she repeats back the lie that he told her. Um, or we suppose the lie that he told her, which is, oh yeah, well after dinner, the guys and I went out and had some drinks. So, you know, he was a little bit rough this morning because he was drinking with the guys. Then there's this big, long, dramatic pause where we see Candace have this look like, I've got to do it, I've got to do it now. She says something to the effect of, um, Ashley, can I tell you something? Can I talk to you? And I hope to God she's gonna say, can we take a little walk? 
Although that's still super suspicious and they're gonna come back and everyone's gonna figure out what's happened. So either way, this is basically being done in the open. This sucks. This is terrible. She should not have told Giselle. She should have kept it to herself. And I mean, granted, the production crew was around. And what do you think they're gonna do? Again, this is TV gold. It's TV gold, I tell you. It has to be in the show. So she's gonna end up, one way or another, everyone at that table is gonna know that night about the texts and about the photo of Michael. Um, anyway, they cut there, they say to be continued. Um, like I said, even if best case scenario, she's like, can we go for a walk? There's something I wanna say. What are they gonna do? Come back to the table and they're gonna say, what was that about? Oh, nothing, no. Everyone's gonna know, plus, Presumably they're gonna come back and Ashley's gonna be crying. So this is all gonna be aired in public. And this is the part, of, this is the kind of dark underbelly of reality TV that I don't like, because this is something very painful and it has to do with breaking up a family. So yeah, this I don't really want aired in front of our eyes. Seeing Ashley find out about this, I don't really want to watch that. I wanna know what happens, but I don't want to watch her going through something so personal and so painful. Anyway, um, so that was the end of this episode. And um, I just wanna tell you again how fabulous I think all of you are. I love your comments so much. Um, I have a few new people to thank, but I think I'm gonna wait until I do the, um, next I'm going to uh, be doing the, um, reunion part two of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And I know that one is, everyone on the different channels is watching that one. So I think I'm gonna leave my thank yous for that. Um, but I really have to say everybody who's new, welcome to our little tribe, our shady little tribe. I love it. Um, I'm enjoying you guys so much. You're so interesting. We've got uh, Colombia, we've got Germany, we've got, you know, we've got people from all over. And um, yeah, I'm just, you guys are very clever. The comments are very clever. I've gotten advice. Um, I've gotten uh, interesting information that I didn't know about various people on the shows. And I just, and you make me laugh. You know, some of you're just funny. So um, keep sending those comments. I love them. <laughs> I love you guys. Um, if you have not yet subscribed, once again, she always puts this off till the end. Um, please do hit that red button, uh, subscribe and make that bell ring, put it on notify so that every time um, new content comes up, you will know and you can get to it right away. Remember, there are three channels, which I'm gonna have to do something about pretty soon because they're all three growing. And um, I mean, even though I'm still, I'm still quite small, I just started, but uh, it's gonna be harder and harder the longer I wait to consolidate the channels. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to ask at the beginning of a show when everyone's definitely still there, what you guys think about that, whether I can put it all on one. And then if you just, if you don't like Real Housewives, although I don't, I think, don't think there's anybody who doesn't like Real Housewives, but the people that just are here for 90 days um, on the other channels, they can just not, just don't click on the housewives and same vice versa. If you don't like 90 days, you know, the housewives videos are there and the 90 days you can just skip. And then I think there are a lot of people who are there for both. Like me, I'm there for both. Highbrow and lowbrow, that's me, I can be both. Um, anyway, so yeah, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Remember that I have two other YouTube channels. Um, I have three YouTube channels in total. Real Housewives, T, T-E-A, and Shade, Intelligent Reality Recaps, and 90 Day Fiance, Let's Judge. So let's remember, Real Housewives, T, and Shade, Housewives Only, Intelligent Reality Recaps, both Housewives and 90 Days, and 90 Days, Let's Judge Together is all things 90 Days. Um, on Instagram, you can find me with my little one minute preview clips of the latest recap. I always put those up as soon as I put up the recaps or sometimes slightly before. And those are Real Housewives, T, T, E, A, and Shade and 90 Day Fiance, Let's Judge Together. So follow me on those as well. Eventually I will be creating 
original content for the one minute videos on Instagram. I just have to kind of get my feet under me. And again, I've had this thing where I've had a few weeks of doing six recaps, which is, ah, it's a lot. <laughs> I'm new. So anyway, thank you so much for joining me. Please take very good care of yourself and um, be good, but not too good. <laughs>